You're listening to Dead Air Podcast, part of SplatterPictures.net. What's up, everybody? Wes, Dead Air Nipe here with always typical Lydia today we're going to be talking a little bit about the burning but before we do you guys just got to enjoy our brand new intro which features a song by patron state of plagues graciously provided by opie saint and the title is ghost train before we get going there is a funny story about patron state of plagues that involves me meeting lydia for the very first time back when i was starting this whole horror thing where i was going to be writing I introduced myself to the people at Ottawa Horror. Lydia wasn't there, uh, but she was the one that contacted me later. And we were going to meet up at the Mayfair Theatre. And she said, oh, I'm going to be wearing a Patron Santa Plague shirt. And of course, I couldn't tell her that I didn't know what the fuck that was. Because, you know, I'm a horror man about town. That's, <laughs> that's so I have to know what I'm talking about. I had to Wikipedia, not Wikipedia, I Googled it. I Googled it to see what, okay, Patriots had a plague shirt. What does that mean? I'm stoked the fact that you actually found something. I did. And I found the image, uh, like the, the, basically the, their emblem, like the yeah. mask and stuff like that. Yeah. And so I knew what I was going to talk, uh, I knew what I was looking for. And funnily enough, on the way there, I ran into you at a bus stop. Yeah, just randomly, because you're like, I'll be wearing a Dr. Five shirt. And I was like, there's a guy with a Dr. Five shirt. And you're like, there's a girl with a PSOP shirt. Yeah, and, and I said, are you, are you Lydia? And the funniest thing about that is, <laughs> it's a good thing I ran into you there. Because when we got to the Mayfair Theater, and I think they were playing, what was it? Father's Day? Tromas? Tromas Father's yeah. Day. So we were there to watch that. And there was another guy there. That easily could have fit my description. Just white guy, glasses, abominable Dr. Five shirt. Yeah. We were wearing the exact same thing. Pretty embarrassing. <laughs> it's like, oh, one of us has to change. Usually that happens to the girls, huh? I, I know. Mm-hmm. But in the horror community, it's going to be guys with horror t-shirts. I was like, whatever. We all went to the same conventions. We all buy the same damn t-shirts. Yeah, because I totally would have walked up to that guy and just be like, you got to be Wes. And he'd be like, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Freaky you woman. Man. So... Given the fact that this is a podcast with me and Lydia, and the first thing I remember about you is I have to look for the woman wearing the Painter's State of Plagues t-shirt. The fact that they provided the intro makes absolute sense, and so I'm super stoked to have that. Yeah, I know, and I'm really appreciative. They're pretty awesome guys. Super good guys, and of course, once after I looked up what what I'd be looking for in a t-shirt, I later checked out their music. And uh, became a big fan, so got to inter- got to learn something while meeting you. Yay, learning! <laughs> That's what we do here. That's what we do here. Um, so what we're going to talk about today is the burning. It's a camp slasher film from 1982, I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's almost as old as you are, and <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's one that I'd never heard of, which is pretty cool because I really like that. Uh, slasher genre camp slasher genre and especially that era and ones with canadian uh, ties yeah and it does have that the interesting thing about this film uh the wikipedia entry sort of suggests that it got shuffled into the mix around this time 1982 you had sleepaway camp coming out which was 80 or or 70 i think it was in 80 i'd have to like yeah, we'd have to look it up. And then, and of course, Friday the 13th coming out around that time too. And so it, it was weird to me because they were suggesting sort of that sort of unjustly shuffle. Like, it's as good as these. Bold statement. Oh, yeah. Which is fine. I mean, generally speaking, <laughs> the burning is all right. I don't know if it if it has the sort of charm of Friday the 13th or... Or Sleepaway Camp. It certainly exists within the genre. It's certainly a camp slasher. I mean, it kind of depends what the criteria that you're looking for. Well, it has a camp. Check. It's Check. in the summertime. Check. It's got campers. Girls with no bras and short shorts. Or mom jean shorts. There definitely was that. Check. 
there was like long scenes of that girl just running <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, they were playing baseball. Jello boobs. I like her. Yeah. 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 It's. It's. There's <laughs> definitely. You definitely have that going for it. And yeah, check. So then, and you also have a slasher. People die. Yeah, for sure. There's kids at camp. The the whole movie starts off as a lot of these fucking movies start off, where it's like a cruel prank gone wrong, and these kids <laughs> through no real. They never ever go into why they're pranking this guy. They just don't like him. Can I rant right now about the skull? Since you're, I since that's you know they gotta listen to something, so I may as well just rant every like ten minutes or so. Just all like like I did through the whole film about every ten minutes, if not every five minutes. Go just like where did they get the skull? And by the way, um, if you're planning to watch the burning, you don't want any spoilers. Don't listen anymore because there's going to be a lot of spoilers coming about the plot such as it is and up to i guess starting right now we'll talk about something that lydia just didn't really like yeah where did they get the skull so these (laughs) kids their prank is it's so strange there's so many simpler things that you could possibly do to prank somebody but for some reason, they're going, like, all these kids are sitting there huddled around this box. And you don't know what they're doing with it. I thought it was poop. You thought it was poop. Yeah. And th- there's there's fire involved. There's a lighter. What are they doing? They... Had to be poop, right? Yeah. They go to this guy's sleeping bunk, and they put something. We don't see what it is. Poop. It's not poop. I wish it was. <laughs> but it's not. I wouldn't have this problem. We don't see what it is. And what it ends up being is a worm ridden skull like a head of some kind with the uh, the eyes lit like candles and of course the guy wakes up freaks out knocks the skull over and it, is immediately engulfed in flames well he goes he goes up like he's doused in gasoline which in a way he <laughs> kind of was because there's a gas can next to his bed which logically you would keep and it just goes over the fire that's already forming and he, he just lights up, you know, like yeah. a bale of hay. And and that's sort of where we start off and, you know, this guy ends up at the hospital. But, yeah, it begs the question, where did that fucking skull come from? Like, what is it? Like, is it a prop? Did they make it? Did they find a human head in the forest? And they the- seem way too giggly and, and, and excited about themselves to for it to have to have been a created object. Because by that time, they'd probably be tired and like it would be like the novelty would have worn off. They're pretty stoked on this. So I think they found it or got it somewhere or something. I can't see them making it because it looks so real. If they were supposed to have made it, it would be made like out of like camp things, you know, popsicle sticks and pipe cleaners or whatever you. <laughs> that's what that's what camps closet. Yeah, that's what camps have pipe well, cleaners. Okay, then twigs and sticks and glue. It did look. It did look very realistic to Too be real. to be. And, and then why would crafts. it have so much maggots on it? If you were going to make, like, a scary skull to scare people, you'd probably make a bleach bone skull. You wouldn't, like, you know, what, what do they coat it in peanut butter or something? And, yeah, like, you wouldn't think to... Stick some maggots on it? I it, And it's so strange. Like, again, I hate, I hate starting off a movie with kids playing a cruel prank on somebody when there's no context. Like, I don't, I don't care. I don't, like, why are these kids being a dick to this one guy? And it doesn't seem to really make any sense, which leaping forward is another thing that happens later on when there's like a random kid in the present time who's bullied for seemingly no reason. And not bullied so much as there's this one guy that's kind of mean to him. <laughs> who's mean to everybody. He who's mean to out. everybody. <laughs> but that guy's like, I have no friends. Nobody likes me. I don't want to be at this camp. Like, cut to two minutes later in the movie, and everyone's on his side, and the counselors are being really patient with him, and... Everyone sticks up for him and actually makes sure he's okay, and like friends do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot like friends do. He's never, like, alone. He's always within the group. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense to me. We couldn't figure out anything about this guy that set him apart. He looked like everybody else. He wasn't that communicative, but what kids are, whatever mystery age these kids, quote unquote, are supposed to be. Well, there's that. There's the fact that a lot of these actors playing these kids. I mean, look, when you're looking at any sort of horror film, 
a lot of the time, like any movie, like a lot of times people cast t- people in their 20s to play somebody as a teenager. Oh, for sure. Sometimes... Like I could be cast at 25 to 30. Yeah. For sure. Easy peasy, actually. And that's totally believable. But they had such a weird, broad mix of, like, Tiger is maybe 12-ish or something and looks 12-ish. <laughs> She's not and 12. then you have, like, she looks very young, though. 30 to 35-year-old men that were, quote-unquote, the older kids. Yeah. That's ridiculous. It was a large discrepancy in the way everybody looked because you had these scenes in the cafeteria where there was all these age ranges and then in walks these guys <laughs> that, that look like... Definitely 35 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 like they all just came in from their day jobs and they're like <laughs> just hanging out at the summer camp. <laughs> <laughs> Which is creepy. Yeah. Yeah. Jason Alexander's in it. It was one of his first roles. Which blew me away. Yeah. He's he's one of those 35-year-old teen-ish older kids. I don't even know. With 87 to... shirts that all say 96 on them. Yeah. Which is brilliant. I want a 96 shirt. Yeah. I, just, I, I wonder if he got to keep those after the movie was over. He said, can I keep all these? Oh, he's keep... a pretty friendly guy. We call him up and ask him. <laughs> I don't know. As long as we butter him up first and tell him how amazing his hair looked. I don't know if that would help. Mm. You know, one of those interesting things is when I saw it, uh, when I saw him, I was like, oh, he's got a full head of hair. Mm-hmm. Because I remember watching um, Dune. Mm-hmm. Like and that was like Patrick Stewart pre Next Generation, and so I don't know why I was expecting him to have hair in that movie, but he was just as bald as ever. And so part of me, when I found out that Jason Alexander was in this movie, yeah. I was like, I wonder if he's gonna, I wonder if he's gonna have his hair, yeah, because he'll be he'll be decidedly younger. So I will see. And sure enough, he's got his full head of hair. Yeah, but he didn't go full billiard ball paint style. He still had like hair remnants. And, like, side hair. He didn't, like, shave his head entirely. Like, Patrick Stewart. Ben Kingsley does the same thing. Yeah. I, I can't remember a film now that Ben Kingsley, or Sarah Ben Kingsley has. So that's what he said. His hair. He Sorry. Got, he got knighted, ma'am. You, you watch yourself. I try and keep I track of that. I mean, it's hard. <laughs> um, After this prank is, is done, and this guy burns, it's five years later... He comes back as a deranged killer with, uh, well, grass clippers is his weapons of choice. It sounds so light for, of you to call them grass clippers. They're shears. They're shears. Okay. Well, <laughs> well, they're hedge clippers. I, I under- shears is correct. I mean, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> disputing that, but they're fucking hedge clippers. But that's his weapon of choice. They're and so sharp, too. They're very sharp. I mean, it, it's not... Like, you know, I have hedge clippers up in my cottage that I'm sitting there on my hands and knees like I can't even cut the reeds with it. I'm just freaking going and sweat's pouring down my head. I can't cut through a single blade of grass. This guy is carving people up like he's wielding a samurai sword. He actually slices somebody like it's as sharp as a straight razor or a scalpel. And yeah, yeah, he just yeah uses it like that as opposed to the, the clipping chopping motion or whatever. He just sliced somebody with the open blade. Um, I like the that he apparently, when it's explained later, that he used to wield these garden shears and sort of terrorize campers with them. And then he goes with the first kill and gets the scissors, which is just like a like a sore stand-in for his shears that he's so used to. Yeah. And then, I don't know, I guess he finds them at the camp. It's weird because it doesn't really explain what his motivation is. It, I, you would assume that he wants to get revenge on the people that pranked him, that burned him in the first place. Yeah. But he's not really all that focused on just getting back at them. And there's really even only one person at the camp that had that had anything to do with it. Yeah. And and I don't know what happened to the rest of the, the the kids that were involved. It didn't ever really said. No, I guess they didn't stick around. You know, they were all off in L.A. snorting coke or whatever it is that you did. In well, it's the five years later. Yeah. So it's strange to me that I, I was like, first of all, like five years later, what's this guy doing? Like he just goes back to the camp 
That's why he looks Yeah, he's so... not even traumatized by it. He uses it as a goddamn campfire story. Yeah. So he doesn't even yeah. care that he almost, he was party to almost burning someone to death. And he wasn't even the reluctant kid, which is kind of what I was holding out for. That yeah. It, that the one, the leftover guy, Todd, I thought that he would be the reluctant kid, the guy that didn't really want to be involved. And that's why he's back. So maybe it's something in him that's saying, oh, you know, I'm going to come back to this camp and it'll be like sort of like paying my dues and paying my respect by you know, becoming a counselor and treating kids maybe a little bit better and, yeah. you know, being a better person. No, he was in there like a dirty shirt. Yeah. This movie has both a lot of cliches that come with slashers and especially ones that take place in camps and, and the woods and anything like that. But it also has like really offbeat moments. Like the one thing that I'll say, like all the deaths are clumped together is my point. Like there's huge stretches in this movie where nothing happens. It's just the camper is just... Well, like the what, the 25-minute paddling sequence where yeah, they're just, all playing in canoes? Like just splashing water <laughs> at each other. And I mean, I guess like if you're going for characterization, but they didn't even really do that that much. No, they didn't. And uh, it didn't help build anything. It wasn't even um, like a repast from tension at all because no. there was none had been really been built by that point. Yeah. And it's not like he's sitting there watching them and getting like pissy because they're having a good time and he's all burnt and lurking or whatever yeah. it wasn't even one of those moments um his lurking is, is different he doesn't even seem to follow people in a in a sense that builds any sort of character or really explains to you why he singled them out at that particular moment yeah especially when you consider that the camp has so many people at it mm -hmm. it looks like there's hundreds of people there you know either campers counselors the people in charge, like that, the the lunchrooms are are just filled with people, and why he singles out those specific people that had nothing to do with. I mean, the one guy did, mm -hmm. but everybody else didn't. So why pick them out? And I don't know. It just didn't make any sense to me. And I think that was like one of my biggest problems with it was just not a lot was ever explained. And I I'm, I'm not looking for. You don't have to lay everything out on the table for me, especially when you're talking about this genre of horror. Mm -hmm. I don't really need a lot of explanation, but I need some logic. I need some idea about what the fuck's going on. Well, especially when they're saying that this is on par with the other camp horror That's what I'm saying. at the same time, which had a lot going for them. And there was a, a lot of really cool, developed, deep storyline if not just amazing shock endings that that really psychologically scarred you yeah. if the people that it was about weren't already similarly psychologically scarred i think they were probably hedging on the fact that you wouldn't see this movie when they're like oh yeah it totally holds a candle to all the other movies that came out that were just like it at the time which it just doesn't it sometimes it's some kind uh excuse me it somehow reminds me of just people well, everyone likes these camp slasher movies, so I'm going to like this one mm -hmm. because it's not the ones that everybody talks about. And I do I do love uncovering gems and stuff like that. I didn't hate it, but it's just okay. It, it's, it's nothing that I really feel is special. It, I mean, it's another edition of this genre of slasher. It's a camp slasher movie. I don't think it's any better. Like, I would rather watch... Sleepaway Camp for Friday the 13th. Oh, for sure. I just like those movies better. And I don't know if, if maybe I hadn't seen those movies and I would just seen The Burning. I might think it was interesting to see the camp setting. But I still wouldn't even think it was that great of a movie. I just like, eh. There was no one to really identify with, especially if you watched it in context and the agent was released, or even as a younger person. Yeah. You'd be like, okay, so the, the the bad guy is this like old drunk that got burnt up for no real good reasons. So you can't no. feel for him, and you can't feel for the people that played this prank gone wrong on him at all. There's none of them you can really relate to. They don't develop those characters whatsoever. So you're like, okay, I don't feel a thing for anyone in the first, like, 20 minutes of the movie. Awesome. Then no one in the hospital. I really like that one orderly, but I wasn't, like, that emotionally attached to him because he was there for two minutes. He was just an interesting human being. Um, and just constantly characters just, like, they don't believe each other. They're always like, oh, you're playing a prank. And I that's the type of cliche that they I can't stand. They hardly make eye contact with one another. I was going to point that out at one point. It's like... 
it's almost like they're reading from cue cards. I was almost going to guess that. But then I thought, well, maybe they just don't know each other very well anyway. They don't make eye contact until way later in the movie, yeah. which I don't know if this is filmed linearly, linearly, where they basically just met each other and <laughs> filming started. So they're all like, uh, I don't even know this guy. And I think that was what was going on because there was a lot of times they were saying like they were accusing each other of things or you know, saying that they were always playing a prank or saying that that person, uh, you should lay off that person because he's not a bad guy. And they're not even making eye contact. So there's no sincerity between these people whatsoever. And they're at this weird mix of age ranges. So you're like, why is that 35-year-old guy putting his arm on that 12-year-old girl? I don't get it. Yeah. They go from zero to 60 so fast where, where they're trying to get with a girl and then she says no and, like, they get angry like what <laughs> yeah. what especially when they were like walking down a trail one second and then all of a sudden his tongue was in her ear and she's like get out of here and he's like screw you bitch and it's yeah. like Whoa, shoving him up against trees down. and stuff and... yeah and as soon as they push them away at all at all they lose their shit yeah it's yeah. weird it is really weird and i don't think it's not until oh, like three quarters of the way through the movie one sex act happens it's Which, true. I think that's backwards for all the other, maybe that's what all the other camp slashers have going for them, is that the rampant amounts of teenage sex that was actually happening, and girls who were into it, not girls that were like, ah, oh, get off me. I don't know what they were trying to change there, or why. Maybe they were trying to do something different. Maybe they were looking at those films and saying, well, you know, this these were elements in in those movies. Maybe we'll just do the opposite of that. I don't know. I'm, I'm a lot of the times when I'm watching this movie, I am trying to think about what like if it was a cash grab to get in on the camp slasher craze, if you could call it a craze. Like I, I just I don't know. I like it's so weird. It's it, there's just something off about it. It's just a... I think we're looking at it as a craze now. Looking back, I think at the yeah. time it was probably just accessible sets. It is very true. I mean, you you have woods, you have kids, just film it and you're done. Um, Tom Savini did the special effects. Did uh, mm-hmm. on, on that movie? What do you think of those? Not bad. Not bad. The yeah. the blood improved as it went along. There was one part where it looked kind of kind of thin, but then later on it looked like Savini caliber. Yeah, I, I I'm telling you the first the first kill I didn't like with the with the prostitute. No, I mean neither. It, it it was really very cheesy. Yeah. Look, well, I like look uh, the I don't know what the actress's name was that got to play that role. But she wasn't really, she wasn't really selling oh, it. I remember all that it well. too, because I thought it was the best name ever. <laughs> Damn, and I forget it. Oh, well, well, you know, no offense to her, but she wasn't really selling it all that well in the first place. And then they kept doing like long cuts to and horrible camera angles too. Yeah, yeah, but long cuts to long cuts to the kills. Oh, long cuts to him. Sort of, <laughs> it was like he had jabbed her. With this giant scissors and was just sort of like spinning it around and stirring it up in there. Yeah, and yeah. it was just I don't know. It just I, I figure a, a little would have done a lot for that scene if you would just sort of showed the penetration, which sounds dirtier than I meant it to, and 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 uh, and then just cut away from it as opposed to constantly going back to it. Mm, see, I liked the pan up to show that this. Because we know it's a prosthetic. So this prosthetic was so artfully placed Mm. that we get to pan up her living body to her face in the one seamless cut. And we know that there's no, like, real smoke and mirrors happening there. It's just an artful prosthetic full of a lot of, like, blood bags. Um, But it was the wiggling around that, you know... It drew attention to the prosthetic to me. Yeah, it did. So if it would have been just a jab and bleed... But still, continue with that pan up, not a cut away. Yeah. I would have really enjoyed that. And yeah. yeah, it was just the 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 over manipulation of the yeah. wound site. Most of the kills were were okay. I mean, you're sort of limited by the fact that the killer is intent on using the same weapon over and over again. I think what always sort of captured my imagination with the Friday movies was, for the most part, yeah, he he uses a machete or or is she. Spoilers, if you didn't know. <laughs> but, <laughs> oh, boy, it's just um, ruined if everyone who hasn't seen <laughs> television ever. Yeah, who's yeah. ever turned on a TV in the month of October. But javelins, machetes, yeah. 
Yeah. Axes, tomahawks. Well, yeah, that, that, there's always like a wide variety, bow and arrows. Yeah. There's, there's always a wide variety of, of kills that were happening, and that was part of it that that kept your interest in, oh, how is this person going to get it? Mm-hmm. But I mean, if you're constantly, well, they're going to get stabbed by scissors, and oh, they got stabbed in the throat. And it was weird because I seem to remember they did a couple of the same types of kills. Like people were getting a lot of neck slashes yeah. and, and stuff like that. So, you know... Not really inspired. I like the neck cutting. I liked that. I don't know what it is about it. I think it was fairly well done, for one. Well, yeah. For sure. Um, it's super bloody. I like the surprise look on their faces. I like that it's a full frontal, fairly intimate kill. And I like that it, right away, keeps them from screaming. That was handy, from my point of view. Yeah, as a, as a, I, actually, I never, th- I never even thought about that. Machete sheer killer, you know? <laughs> I never thought about that. Do you think they thought about that? Do you think? Do you think they they were uh, they were like, oh, you know, if you stab them in the throat, they can't scream, and then they won't alert other people that they're getting murdered. Think well, that... I don't know. Maybe I've just played enough stealth type video games that that's the first thing I think of is I take out that voice box. And no problems. <laughs> You're gonna be put on a watch list. Jesus, why, why? <laughs> Ugh, I'm the most harmless thing ever. Well, we'll never hear you coming, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. Maybe you'll just have to edit that part out where I said I kill people. <laughs> no, you never said you kill people. <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't. <laughs> you never said that. <laughs> that's fucked up. Yeah. Anyway. So there's this scene where essentially the, the campers, the older campers go on a canoe trip. For a couple of days. I don't know why you would go to a camp and then go on a trip from the camp. You're just Oh, I've done that. No, I've totally done that. Have you but really? I was younger. I was a lot younger. Yeah. And you'd like to think that due to the 30-some year old age of these older campers, <laughs> plus Tiger for some reason. Plus Tiger. <laughs> the 12-year-old. Well, there's a reason. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> Usually, you'd take a sort of trip like that to go and have sex and get drunk, but there's no booze, no pot, no pot, no mention of pot whatsoever. That's true. I know. And, uh, of course, no one wants to have sex because those girls are completely non-sexual creatures. Yeah. Yeah. But they they go on this canoe trip, and they're, the killer takes their canoes, kills one of them, and takes her canoes. And so they build a raft and a few of them, five of them, get into the raft and are going to raft back to camp. They come across one of the canoes and they do this long scene where all five of them are paddling as fast as they possibly can to get to this canoe and it looks, first of all, it looks like the raft isn't moving at all. Oh, yeah, and they're paddling like mad, and it's it, honestly is stationary. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's so strange to me, because it becomes frustrating to me. I was like, why isn't that raft moving faster? <laughs> and 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 the, the logical uh, thought that you would get is, oh, they're going to find, because they don't know what happened to that girl's body. Yeah, so, I swear to God, that's where it would be. Yeah, so you think that, Oh man, they're, they're going to go there and they're going to see the body, and then it's going to be the big scare. And uh, here we go. I um, figured that, the, and the guy who had last seen her alive was there on the raft with them, in the lead at that. Yeah. And even though he liked her, he was the last person to see her alive. I really thought that was going to be a whole like, oh my god, you killed her, and everyone's going to freak out, and then God knows what. Yeah, but instead, it has the killer just leap out of the canoe like a jack in the box. You said like a jack in the box. And kill five people. It, like, just kills five people in 30 seconds. With It was ridiculous. As ridiculous to me as people pointing out that painting of Washington where he's, like, standing up in the boat. <laughs> and everyone's just like, he couldn't stand up in a boat. Well, I'm here to tell you that I don't believe that that killer could leap out of a canoe and not just fall into the fucking lake. I know. I'm pretty goddamn good in a canoe. I know a lot of people that could leap up in a canoe. You could leap up in a canoe and even do the, the, the leather face chainsaw dance if you wanted. You really, really could. I don't believe it. I could. For sure. You Easy could. peasy. But well, okay. to take out five people with... Well, that's the other thing. Your like, shears. I'm willing to believe that you can you can 
lie down in a canoe, completely lie down in a canoe to the point in which it looks like there might not be anybody in the canoe. For sure. You can get up to a standing position with your hedge clippers. Yeah. I, all right. It's a little bit of a stretch, but all right. But then to have five people just get murdered because, I don't know, you scared them so bad. Well, you scared them with the first kill, you know. You stuck your your fingers into someone's throat or whatever. But I think that you're right because immediately the first thing that anyone does to anything that scares them, you know, if somebody approaches you on the street, a stranger, let alone somebody coming at you in the middle of the lake out of a canoe like a jack-in-the-box with shears, you're going to push them away. One small push from one of any of those five people would have sent him into the drink. Or anything, just anything. I, it's more more than just standing there terrified while your fingers get cut off and you get stabbed in the throat or like part of your forehead gets cut off. I mean, the, the kills are pretty gruesome in that scene. I don't know, forehead bone's pretty harsh. I don't the, know how he cut right through up someone's forehead. You're talking about a guy who's... <laughs> hedge clippers are sharp enough to <laughs> to kill people in the first place i'm willing to believe that all right because they establish those things as pretty effing sharp like oh yeah he stabs them into a tree like he's yeah just, like, the very stick... first kill he did yeah. or not the the well the first kills with the scissors but the first kill with those shears those shears in particular yeah uh, he just cuts the throat like uh like like it's a, with a scalpel or yeah razor blade it's pretty it's pretty impressive to be able to do that <laughs> with the weapons. And it was weird because like he was just a guy. Like, he he didn't really establish him as having any sort of like superhuman quality about him except for the fact that he eats an axe in the face at the end of the movie <laughs> and somehow they burn him and he like gets up and he's like flailing around cuz he's burning. No, that was a memory. That was a memory. You have to you have to look at it again. What? Because, yeah, that was the memory of the very end. Also notice he doesn't say a word through any of that. The Cropsy, the killer, he does not say a word. They make up a word during the ghost story. They say that he said, I'll be back or whatever is <laughs> yeah, revenge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But other than that, he does not speak a word. There's I mean, like that's okay. I like I'm all right with that. Slashers they they have some silent killers. Yeah. You know, in a lot of the, well, a lot, in some of these movies. He has, like, I like, no, it's true, though. When you're saying that he has no real motivation, he has no real personality, like, his, his mom didn't mistreat him, we didn't get to see any of that. Uh, no particular campers really, like, step on his toes too badly. Mm-hmm. Apparently he just treated everyone like dirt. Um, and not even that badly. He didn't, like, you know, rape or abuse any of the children at the camp, so there's no real reason for anyone to really hate him that badly. You could maybe make the argument that they were trying to do something to make it more ambiguous. To Maybe it might be more scary if you didn't really know a lot about this character's motivations. Except they showed enough of the character like becoming the killer. But like there's no, there's no indication at all that he's really even trying to get revenge. Because cause again, like even the, 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 the guy that was part of the prank, is not even the focus of him. He's not, not. It's like he, he doesn't even know who he is. Yeah, he's not fixated on that whatsoever. And it's not like he's trying to... Like, what is he trying to do? Is he trying to get back to his original camp? Like It's a different camp. Yeah, like, what's the point? I don't understand. No, I don't understand. Maybe he just hated campers so much. Sort of like, um, you know, someone, an old crotchety person who hates children, so they live near a school and they just constantly hate on the kids yeah maybe, my lawn. yeah <laughs> kill so you with my like, shears i hate campers so much i'm gonna go and work in a camp and then he when he comes back for his like revenge he's gonna be like, i'm gonna go directly to a camp after i get a prostitute and kill her and first. kill her yeah well you know he he was treated kind of poorly she got kind of freaked out when she saw him which of course he probably expected due to the orderly's behavior at the freaking hospital but it's weird because they don't indicate that he was a killer at all. They don't. It's just so what he got burned and then he was. He, I'm gonna be a fucking murderer now. Five years eating hospital food. Yeah, five years. <laughs> <laughs> See if that don't scramble your brains a little. If I have one more spoonful of that green Jello, I'm gonna just fucking murder somebody. <laughs> or like twenty somebodies. 
<laughs> oh god. They had the kids had a good reaction to finding those bodies. Like they were like huddled and and crying. Yeah. I, I, I was like, wow, that's actually they, they look pretty messed up. That's the most realistic scene and when they got off of the um the raft the second time they they all got on the death raft and <laughs> back, battled themselves back to the main camp which is just so awesome because yeah like they they didn't show what would have been the best part of them moving their friends bodies yeah. maybe just tipping them into the lake or whatever and then washing off the raft a little because i wouldn't want to step on yeah. that sickly sticky gore you know and then you gotta paddle it and you can probably be like jesse had this paddle last ah, you know a little and, breakdown and, and they're blood is all over the place oh yeah so when they get back to camp they're shaken they just paddle the death raft for god knows how long back to camp they're still probably not safe there because it all started there and they know that now and like yeah traumatized yeah that was that was pretty much the only moment in the movie that i really thought was well acted and somewhat believable like i'm all for um, slashers in general and, and show like these sort of like superhuman guys cutting through teenagers and whatever have you. Mm-hmm. Honestly, to me, it's always how the characters react to those deaths that can make or break a lot of these movies for me. If I feel as though they're not upset enough that one of their friends is dead. If, yeah. if I feel, if I feel at all like they're not scared enough, I, I, it loses it for me. And I, and, and I do feel that once they realized, finally realized that something bad was going on, then I feel like they had a fairly appropriate reaction to that. Oh, they certainly did. They were obviously shocked, traumatized, and very. Especially when the body bobbed up from under the water, yeah, um, that was that was pretty well done, and that was scary. And that's to watch your friend going through that, discovering even the the body discoverer and the arm discoverer, and realize what is on the raft is just horrifying. They don't spend enough time with that scene, but they did handle it very, really well. Yeah, I, like more of that. And and speaking of which, when near the end, when there's somebody we don't know who, either the killer. Or Todd is having flashbacks of all the people that the killer killed. And it's handy and cute and all for us because we get to see all the little snippets of the cool kills in the movie. But who's remembering them? Yeah. No, yeah, that was a good point. I remember you bringing that up when we were watching it. It was so strange. Because it, it really is. Um... Well, it keeps focusing back on Todd. It will show a little clip and it will show him. And it's like, he wasn't there when that happened. But it, but And it starts off, the clips start off with like them huddled around the prank at the beginning of the movie. Yeah. And then it leads over into, maybe, maybe they were trying to pull a, a sense of, this prank that I did that I was a party to all those years later has resulted in the death and of but all these people. But he didn't see those kills. That's like, he simply, well, if he would have, if they would have flashed back to clips of the bodies that he saw, cause he saw most of the bodies that would have made some sense. Is it, were they hinting at a psychic link or something? I don't think that was it. I think that they were, I think that they were maybe, I think uh, here, honestly, here's what I think it is. I think that they just didn't have, an idea or a way to show anything else. Yeah. So, so like we want to show these, the scene to get this point across, but we don't really have anything other than the actual scenes that were shot. Maybe that's what all it was. And they were, they were just like, look, let, instead of reshooting scenes, let's just use the same clips that we've already used. Yeah. Yeah. They right. definitely used some stock footage in that. They kept shooting to the lightning in the beginning of the movie and like one, the first lightning effect was terrible mm-hmm. because it, but it, I guess it was supposed to light up the room, but it just looked like, I don't even know how to describe how it looked. It's very fake. And then the the time when they showed the sky with the lightning across, it looked like something out of like an old hammer film or some very gothic, you know, it was a dark and stormy night and like, <laughs> like an old black and white movie or something. Very the first much one, so. I also thought it was uh, like a camera flash for some reason. Right, right. It did look like that. Just, it was so strange. And I, and I also kind of rolled my eyes a little bit. I was like, really? Like the big, you see his face and it's like thunder and lightning and 
But we don't even get to see that. And that was... I, I mean, I guess that was cool. You don't see the killer's face. And in a lot of these movies, they kind of do that. But I just don't even feel like the payoff was all that. Well, we also don't get to see... I guess they didn't have two cameras, maybe. I don't know. They... Um... We don't get to see that one girl pulls a seafood trick in the cafeteria. Some guy's like, like ribbing her, and she takes a big mouthful of food, chews it a couple times, turns around, and she obviously sticks her mouth out because he pulls a face, and then she turns back all self-satisfied looking. And it's like, oh, we didn't get to see. We know what she did. We know she turned around with a mouthful of food and opened her mouth like a gross pig. But we don't get to see <laughs> it. Gross pig. Well, that's like it's my pretty- least favorite thing that humans do. <laughs> Anyways, overall, uh, the burning is just okay. It, there's there's nothing specifically wrong with it. I mean, it has its merits. Uh, Tom Savini's special effects are pretty good, and you Do know, we count Jason Alexander's hair as a Tom Savini effect. <laughs> We will. It's we, pretty good. We will. We will now. What? He's a genius. He's a genius. Special effects genius. He's like, he just went up to them. He's like, look, Tom, I really want to be in this movie, but I'm 45 years old. Is there any way you could give me some hair? Give me some hair for this one. (laughs) Oh, that's so horrible. Oh, my word. Whatever. He's rich. I'm sorry. Some of this. Shit just dribbles out my mouth. <laughs> that's going in. Yeah. Um. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, We're not losing that. I do think that the things that you say that you're nitpicking on, or the things that we would say, or it sounds like we don't like about this film, is what makes it watchable and what makes it entertaining, actually. To get I want to know like where that. they got that skull. <laughs> I mean, honestly, if someone's like, hey, man, I'm going to play this prank on this guy that doesn't deserve it. What, what, what do we want to do? Oh, I know. I'll go grab a, like, a maggoty skull. From where? Oh, I don't know. It's true. They never explained where that came from at all. And maybe, maybe it shouldn't annoy me so much, but it does. Well, again, y- you need some logic. Well, it, it can't. And he gets garden shears. We never see where he gets the garden shears from. He just gets garden shears. He goes into a shed or something, I assume. I mean, it's at camp, so there's garden shears everywhere. But that's garden shears. There's probably garden shears within a two-block radius of us somewhere. So if we really needed garden shears, we could just go find garden shears. But if we really needed a maggoty skull, I'm not really sure where to begin looking. It's not as though that skull prank ever comes back you know if 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 that was the prank and maybe you know the killer took it upon himself to make that his motif yeah or something to that effect i would or if he'd at least skinned one of his kills and put little candles in their eye sockets right to somehow make it make more sense but in terms of a prank they could have done anything so why because because again it could have just been Oh, flame and dog poop prank. Yeah. Or which is an actual prank that people play. Or or and and makes more sense for like kids at a camp to try to do or like the old fingers in the water uh <laughs> trick or uh-huh. whatever just yourself. whatever just something like shaving cream in the in the palm. Something that kind of makes more sense as a prank. And I guess they're just like, "Oh, this is going to scare them." Well, yeah, I guess so if you put a severed head in someone's uh, bedroom. But if you're trying to tell me, well, the, the head wasn't real, yeah, where the hell did they get it from? Yeah. And if it was real, where the hell did they get it from? And how come none of them called one another out on that? How come they were all like, yeah, this is awesome. They weren't like, hey, whoa, 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 where did you get a human skull? Yeah, and I guess you're led to meant to believe that maybe they'd all discuss this out beforehand, but... It would have been nice to throw out a couple of lines of dialogue about where this came from, why this. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that was a Savini skull. Did he dress that skull up for them? Well, if he did the special effects, I'm sure that he would have done everything. I would have somebody like I don't know if if that was a point in his career where he was literally doing everything by himself. I don't know if there was. Yeah, I have to look. I want to. I want to. I want to look at more stills of that. Because I, I, I really honestly believe it was supposed to look like a freshly dug up real skull. Yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, even even if they didn't explain anything, if maybe some point through the movie they would have ran through a graveyard nearby, that would have helped me. It would have helped me a little bit because I'd be like, oh, maybe they got it from the graveyard. Maybe they're really sick fucks and they do this regularly or something. I don't know. But Yeah, that would take it to a different level with those. They kind of come from, they turn from pranksters to grave robbers. I don't see a distinction. The distinction, <laughs> Lydia, is that one is stealing body parts. Uh-huh. And the other one is making arts and crafts of the macabre nature. Oh, okay. Or like flame and dog poops. Flame, flame and dog poops. <laughs> Have you ever played a prank on someone like that? Or like a camp or something? Oh, are you kidding me? I'm way too much of... You're going to get in trouble for it. I like there's... I've, I've maybe been party to uh, like a ding dong ditch type thing. But, but I'm seriously, like, everyone is doing pranks or wants to do pranks and stuff like that. And I'm the one standing back there like, they're going to call the cops, you guys. We got to get out of here. <laughs> like, I, like, I'm I'm way too high strung to think that I could get away with anything. Like, like, even if I were to try to do a prank on my own, I would think that CSI would show up and, like, I would get caught. So, no. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Never. Yeah. What about you? No, I've seen people do pranks. It's, that's not my cup of tea. I just usually don't see the point of it. It's like, okay, are you going to, what, annoy or embarrass somebody and you're going to sit there and laugh because you're some sort of bully? Awesome. And knock yourself out. I don't know. All in all, I enjoyed it. There's other camp slashers that I'd enjoy beyond that. The ending wasn't spectacular. The beginning was nothing short of confusing and then aggravating if you add the the mystery skull to right. the whole thing because i find that particularly aggravating um it's a fun watch though it's definitely fun yeah yeah it definitely is it's not on par with the slashers of the day that share a similar theme at all but it's not unwatchable by any no means. for sure it's yeah. not it's not total dog shit either not at all like it's really it's middling to throw out like an 1888 grammar term. Which I know you're really good at. Yeah. And on that very ancient note, I'm Wes Snipe. And I'm Typical Lydia. And you've been listening to Dead Air. <laughs>